Hey guys, welcome to another virtual Come and Taste It. I'm Connor with Trey of Messina Hoff Winery. Uh, today we're going to be sampling three very exciting and very unique wines from one of the largest and most iconic wineries in the state of Texas. Messina Hoff, as many people may or may not be aware, they're one of the oldest post-prohibition wineries in Texas. We actually opened our doors in 1977. We are 100% Texas. So all of our fruit comes from fruit sourced within the boundaries of Texas. And I think that's exciting. Um, and we really help be with the industry and watch it grow and watch it mature. And I'm excited because I really feel that Messina Hoff is, is leading the charge on the direction of the Texas wine industry. We wouldn't have Cabernet Sauvignon if it wasn't for Cabernet Franc. It's a varietal that has kind of fallen into the shadow of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, which yeah. are two of the other pivotal varietals that originate from Bordeaux from the red side of the family. So Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc got together and they created Cabernet Sauvignon. So what I love, as we were talking about earlier, um, about our Cab Franc is that of the red Bordeaux varietals, I think this is really something that showcases the quality of the grape, and especially how it's produced here in Texas. Um, and we've got kind of a fun exercise. What I've done is yesterday I opened a bottle of our Barrel Cuvée Cabernet Franc, which is what we're going to taste today, and I poured a little bit of that in this glass, and then we opened a fresh bottle of the same wine this morning. So what we're going to be able to do, um, and hopefully this translates wonderfully into the video, is showcase what that overnight aeration mm -hmm. of the wine does for the flavor profile, um, the aromatic profile, and the texture of the wine on the palate. So Cabernet Franc, a little bit thicker skin, uh, mm -hmm. which I think holds up well to the High Plains uh, adverse weather conditions that we talked mm -hmm. about. It's, it's not a nice, friendly place to grow fruit, but I think what that does, it creates wines that are a tribute to the people that make them. And we're a hearty stock of people yeah, here in Texas, absolutely. and we make a hearty stock of wine. And I think this Cab Franc really exemplifies that. That's beautiful. Has a little bit of what I would characterize as a meatiness, which is not a bad thing. Kind of helps the wine pair well with food. Mm -hmm. So versus a Cab Sauv, mm -hmm. because you know that's like the most popular grape for us here at the Grapevine. That's what our customers really enjoy drinking. What would you say are, are big differences? Maybe we can spot between, you know, typical. You know, it's going to be very different considering growing regions and everything. But right. your typical flavor profiles and your typical what you'd expect out of a Cabernet Sauv. Cap Franc is a bigger, fuller body, meatier wine. And I think Cabernet Sauvignon is actually a little more delicate. A little more delicate, which more is hard. To, yeah. You can hard to extrapolate that sometimes, yeah. but if you taste the two side by side, the Cab Franc tends to have more structure and more powerhouse. Very the Cab cool. tends to have a little more elegance and finesse to it. So let's try the new one, just so we can talk a little bit about compare and contrast. Um, yeah, you can immediately tell a difference on the nose. So much more closed down. Yeah. I don't think it's as generous with the fruit. Um, it's a little more angular on the palate. One of the things I like about our Cab Franc a lot is um, after you have a little time in the bottle, those tannins are really silky and fine, and it's a really rounding wine on the palate. It's very generous with the fruit. This is a little bit more, I want to be there. It's jumpy, yeah. a little jumpier, a little more like, um, I guess it tastes more or less ripe, I suppose. There's okay. a little, yeah. like, I guess jumpy is my word for this. Jumpy is yeah. a good word. <laughs> Smells like a fruit bowl. It's amazing. Yeah. She says you can't have wine friend. for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so now we have this Angel Harvest Riesling. Um, late Harvest. Late Harvest Riesling. There's a distinction on that. Yes. We can talk a little bit about that. So let's well, go ahead. Why don't you share that with our, our guests today? Okay. Because um, I thought that was a really cool comparison on this late harvest Riesling to something maybe from Germany. Right. So late harvest simply means, it's pretty simple, we leave the fruit in the vine longer uh, versus a normal harvest. Um, we won't get into all the bricks dissection and all that because I don't want to put our audience to sleep. We want to keep this fun. <laughs> so basically by leaving the fruit on the vine longer, you concentrate the sugars. Mm -hmm. and so instead of adding sugar to a wine to make it sweet, this is natural sugar in the fruit that just arrives because the longer you leave the fruit on the vine, 
the better concentration you get of the sugar because the, the vine continues to ripen throughout the growing season until you harvest it. So we intentionally have fruit that we select that we feel is going to make a really good representation of a late harvest Riesling and we, we pick it after most everything else is picked. So the result is that you get a much higher concentration of sugar. But what I really love about this wine is that it has some really good acidity to back it up. A lot of times when you have sweet wines and they're just sweet, they're what I would call flabby on the palate. And that's mm -hmm. just, okay, it's sweet. It's just kind of there. It's there, yeah. great. But when you have something that has an acidity to back it up, it helps it pop on the palate. And I think that this is a wonderful, wonderful example of what world-class late harvest Riesling represents. You get all those wonderful oh, floral notes along with all those wonderful heady fruity floral notes. It's got a lot of ripe, um, I'm not gonna really say nice. tropical, but I am getting some really nice. It's like some cantaloupe, some melon, yeah. you know? Absolutely. Yeah, this is really nice. Definitely on the, on the sweet side. So I could see, you know, historically why people enjoy these for dessert, but considering our weather, considering you know, Chill something sweet down. is just really nice. Yeah. yeah, sweet and cold. If you're in green and you've come down the river, boom. Boom, <laughs> sweet wine, sweet German style wine in a historically German town. It's very cool. Go. Well, I really like this, but I've certainly had my eye on this. Party in a bottle. So sparkling almond, this is something we don't typically um, Distribute, if you will. It's something we typically sell exclusively at the winery, but because of the partnership with yes, we're the grapevine, uh, we, we do manage to get a little bit into their hands every year. And um, yeah, it's, I like how you described it. It's like an amaretto champagne. That's the way to do Cheers. it. Cheers. Cheers to you. So, yeah, as you were saying, so this is an exclusive wine, almost exclusive to the, uh, to the winery, and we managed to get our hands on it. Shout out to JR over there at the winery. So we, yeah, we've been doing this for probably about a year and it's just been super popular with everybody, you know, who comes in and wants something sweet and sparkling because, you know, it does have that sort of amaretto, you know, cherry sort of liftiness with that mm -hmm. almond on the finish, but it's got a really cool mouthfeel, similar, most similar to champagne than I've actually had in a lot of sparkling wines right. out of Texas. So that's something that I think is a really great selling point on this because it has that that structure that I think a lot of people are looking for in a sparkling wine. Absolutely, and I think it, it's one of those things that kind of helps separate it from the pack. What I love about this wine, it's, it's, this is the epitome of a party in a bottle. Like the Riesling, this is, while it's on the sweeter side, it has that acidity on the back palate that just kind of comes in and lifts everything up. And I think that really actually helps some of the other characters you were talking about, the cherry and the yeah. almond, and it makes them a really wonderful integrated part of the experience. So it's good times. Well, Trey, thank you so much for doing this with us. My and pleasure. And being here today. And Absolutely. thank you to Messina Hoff and everybody you work with and everybody who makes this awesome, beautiful wine that we get to share with the rest of Texas. So. We are happy to do it and we'll keep going. So thank you for your support and your partnership through all this interesting times we're in. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.